Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. This is the third message in the island group called the Azores, Portuguese islands in the Atlantic Ocean. But we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about something that is the favorite subject of so many. Perhaps you are listening to this later. You're not part of this group right now who sits in a beautiful area on the lawn in a park. Perhaps you're in a place where you would never be able to participate in activities of those next to an ocean. And so this is for you. And it's something that we have never spoken of in this way before. Today's message is about whales and dolphins. Now let's start at the beginning. To a biologist, a whale awful also includes all of the dolphins. For this is the classification that dolphins belong in, whales. So to a biologist, if you see a dolphin, there is no difference. It's simply a smaller whale. But for this discussion, we will separate them slightly and call them what you're used to, whales and dolphins. I begin with common sense with a premise that every naturalist knows. I want you to have this, the beginning of a comparison between the animal in the sea, called the whale and the dolphin, and the mammals and animals in the forest in the wild. For there really is no difference. Animals in the wild are like animals in the sea. Instead of a forest, it's an ocean. And so you might expect the same kind of instinctual behavior that you'd have all over the planet with animals in the forest. But it isn't. And that's the subject of this message. Listen to this. What are you taught? by the naturalists who make the guides who then inform you about what is dangerous and what is not. And they will say mostly the animals will leave you alone. In fact, they will go the other way if they sense a human coming into their habitat. Even if they travel in groups or herd animals or lonesome animals, solo animals, they avoid humanity. And you know that. And the naturalist will tell you that you don't have to be too worried about that, that they will move the other way, except in one circumstance, if they have a child, if they have a cub, for instance, if they're a bear. Any animal who has an offspring will attack if they feel you are threatening at all. And you know this. That is the most dangerous thing for animals in the wild, for you to suddenly come upon them when they have their babies with them. Almost everyone I am talking to whether you're sitting on the grass or whether you are listening later, knows this is true. Most animals avoid humans. Indeed, there are exceptions. Some are simply curious, like certain kinds of monkeys. But they still will either avoid you when they see you later or make sure you're not going to invade their territory. But certainly, they don't come over to meet you. 
And that's the difference, dear ones, and that is what we're going to discuss right now. For those who are not near an ocean, I would like to describe something that those know who have had the opportunity to swim with a pod of dolphins. I'll make a statement. You don't go to the dolphins, they come to you. You may go to where you know they are there doing something, whether they are feeding or mating, the same with whales. You may go to where you know they do this, but then when you are there without a dolphin in sight, they will slowly unload the boat and you will get into the water quietly, quietly. And then the boat will back away and you'll wait. And depending upon where you are, certain circumstances of weather and time of day, ocean conditions, the dolphins will find you. My partner has witnessed this and still it makes him weep. They will be off in the distance and they will see you in the water. They sense you with sound. And they will turn, the entire pod of dolphins will turn and come toward the human being. Dear ones, right away, this is counterintuitive to any animal on the planet. Any animal. There is something different happening here. Biologists, listen, you need to do more studies to find out something that you don't really understand or know yet, and I'm going to talk about that also. Then the dolphins, on purpose, will swim through the group of swimmers. They will swim on the surface, underneath all of the humans. And when they are finished, they'll turn around and do it again. So the pod of dolphins is not simply passing through and you just happen to be there. No, that pod, which could be hundreds of dolphins, will turn, swim through you, underneath you, and then on purpose, with intention, turn again and do it again. And my partner has seen them do this up to five times and then leave and go on about their business of whatever they did before. That's not all. You're going to see certain behaviors in these animals when they, they have come to see you. You never see in the wild, ever. I'll get to that in a moment. Whales, similar but different. But let me point out something before I go any further. Yesterday, this group got a glimpse of a species of whale that is the largest animal on the planet to this day. It is equivalent even to the size of some dinosaurs. It is the blue whale and you saw him yesterday. Identified as one who might be twice the length of the boat that you were on. Huge, enormous. Now what was it you saw? Let us look at this in a logical way. The whale comes to the surface and takes a breath or two of air before it goes under again, which they call sounding. Do you think the whale knew you were there? What is your intuition? <laughs> and you'd be right. Nothing escapes this animal about its environment. Of course it knew you were there. You and two other boats. It surfaces, takes a breath, and goes down. And then you wait for up to 20 or 30 minutes, maybe more, for it to do it again. 
Here is the question. That whale could easily travel in 30 minutes, miles, kilometers from where those boats were sitting and waiting for it to surface. That's what they do in their migration patterns. Most of the swimming, not always on the surface, underneath both, they travel. But this whale didn't. And when it came up again, you realize it was literally a few meters from where it was before. This excited the boats enough so they would go and travel to this new spot where the whale was. And of course, their motors were turned on. Do you think the whale knew it was being followed? And the answer, of course, is yes. Three times. The whale went under and came up right where it came up before. Don't you find that interesting? Here is the same kind of behavior you'll find with a dolphin. There was a connection that was safe with the human being. Safe enough. That whale who could destroy any one of those boats so easily in its gentleness came to the surface, took a breath, so that you could all see it. And what was the reaction? To all the boats, there was cheering, there was clapping, there was joy, just to see this magnificent animal. Question, do you think <laughs> that the whale knew this? I'm going to tell you something, and the answer is absolutely. Now there's something else that people don't even consider. In the miracle that you saw yesterday, how do you think that whale was sensing any of this? Do you think there might be some connection that is different than anyone suspects? What if this connection were consciousness? What if somehow that whale could sense the consciousness of a group of humans, how about even one, and that that consciousness was assessed by the whale as safe? I want to present something to you that most have never thought of. Do you know what instinct is? In the animal kingdom, Instinct, especially instinct of survival, is primary to any animal. That instinct is passed down from the mother, the father, to the calf. In the animal kingdom in the forest, that instinct is protection against enemies. Tiny. Animals will be only days old, and yet they will know instinctively what a predator looks like, smells like, acts like. You know this. Question. How many centuries were the whales hunted by boats, harpooned and harvested and killed in waters just like this? And yet that instinct is not there with that whale. Are you understanding this? What stopped that instinct, which could be centuries old? Don't go near boats. Or if you are, prepare to defend yourself against those predators who will kill you and all of your ancestors. That's instinct, and they don't have it. I'll tell you the answer. The answer is that consciousness overrules instinct. I want to return to another experience yesterday that you had. You encountered a pod of dolphins that was unusual. Two things made it unusual. First of all, it was several kinds of dolphins all together. Normally, even forest animals will honor their kind. 
and they will only be with their kind. If you've ever examined a water hole in Africa, even different kinds of antelope and deer will gather together and take turns at the water hole and not be there all at once. They stay with their own kind, but not dolphins. They call them in biology social animals. Oh, it's more than that. And the second attribute was this, that only weeks before, or even perhaps less, they had their children, their babies. Tiny little dolphins were among those that you encountered. Now I want you to look at what happened, dear ones. I want you to really look at this. Do you think they knew you were there looking at the whale? And the answer is, of course. Did you know that they were always there and they were hanging around for you to turn back to the island? And when you did, they arrived. Now let me ask you this, where on the boat did they arrive and show themselves? And the answer was at the bow where everyone was. Next question. In the excitement of seeing all of those dolphins dancing on the water, jumping, leaping, swimming quickly with their young, how many of you had to then run around to the back of the boat as they then passed through? And the answer is very few because you know the dolphins stayed at the bow. Were you aware of that? Did you ever think of that? Not only did the dolphins know you were there, and they wanted to show you something and play with you, but they knew where you were on the boat. <laughs> Does this make you weep? There's something there. That's not all. They were excited. Even the crew of the whale watching boat was excited because those dolphins were there to show you their young. Proud mothers with their young right next to them, over and over and over, were saying, here, look at this, look at this. One mother to another, look at this. And then how many of you saw an action that is counterintuitive to every animal on the planet? They would stop for a moment and they would lean back and show you the whiteness of their belly. In the animal kingdom, tell me, what does that mean? I'll tell you. If you have a dog who does it, it's submission. If you have a dolphin who does it, it says, I trust you. Here is the weakest part of my body because I know who you are, human being. What does that tell you about the connection to this animal? There have been some studies did you know that a group of party-going dolphin swimmers will not attract the dolphins? But a group who is silent and more reverent in expectations of joy will always attract the dolphin. What does that tell you? Are they indeed telepathic? You can use that word. It's the wrong word. They are perceptual. They sense human consciousness, and in that human consciousness, we have told you, is the creative source of this planet. Human being, the closer you are to that, the more the dolphins know it. I invite naturalists and biologists to start doing studies about consciousness humans and dolphins beyond what you have done. Did you hear about the study of the autistic child and the dolphin? Profound it was, for they connected. And they connected at a level that was provable. The child would sit in a room and would select a shape a square, 
a circle, a triangle. Those shapes were all thrown into a swimming pool where the dolphin was living. The dolphin, at least 80% of the time, would select what the child had selected over and over and over. This was not necessarily the way it was with a non-autistic human. That should tell you something. <laughs> These are the studies I invite you to go further. As profound as that is, it's not the end of that story. For the dolphin was moved. For economic reasons, it was moved from California to Florida. The experiments were over until one science advocate of consciousness said, is it really? Let's try it now with the dolphin 2,000 miles away. <laughs> they did. It made no difference. Are you understanding this? Twins with the same DNA can sense what's going on with their relatives, even if they are on different sides of the earth. Consciousness is multidimensional. Consciousness is energy. There's more. I close this with an esoteric comment. Although I will not get into it now, there is amazing history on this planet you haven't been taught about because you don't know. Four other civilizations, smaller, much smaller than yours today, were here before you. You are number five. There was enough space between the civilizations that nothing has been found until now. Now suddenly you're starting to uncover things that are thousands of years older than even your oldest estimate of how longer, long you've been here. With your new instrumentation and science, this is going to be even grander and greater. You will start seeing these civilizations before civilization. And the reasons we have told you before of how these civilizations terminated, you almost didn't make it, dear ones. Once it was pandemic, another time it was weather. There are many times, four, that are in question. And I'll tell you this, a few years ago, you almost did it again. Only this time, you would have warred yourself into extinction. Now this is so esoteric, so many people will not understand at all. The connection between the whales, the dolphins, and humanity is stronger than you know. Well, they are the backup system to the human Akash. If you had destroyed yourself completely, all of the memories of everything that had happened on this planet could still be retrieved and used by those who would go somewhere else at another time. Even without one human here, the living library of the Akash of the planet is embedded in the whales and the dolphins. An animal that is protected by over 90% of the Earth's population, even treaties that say, don't touch it. It's not a coincidence. These are the things that are eye-rolling to many people. But these are the truths. That is how important consciousness is who you are, and the very soul that you say you have. That's about the dolphins and the whales. The next time you see them, look at them differently. 
When a dolphin turns itself open, shows you the opening of its flippers, and shows you its, its white stomach. I want you to know what it's telling you. I see you, it says. You're safe, it says. I'm exposing my most vulnerable parts to you because you are safe, for I see the Creator in you. I know you. Beautiful. And you experienced it yesterday. Some of you will experience it again. Think on these things, things which perhaps are larger than you realized. And so it is.